Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 24. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction for the people of God that she had done to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the compense of reward. Notice verse 27. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seen him who is invisible. As seen him who is invisible. The experience he had at the burning bush never left him. The voice he heard at the burning bush never left him. That was in Exodus chapter 3. When he got to Exodus chapter 4, he could still hear that voice ringing in his ears. And he could still see that bush born in there. And he could see, see, see the appearance of the Lord. Holy ground. Holy voice speaking to him. He got to, uh, Acts of the, uh, sorry, he got to Exodus chapter 7. He could still hear that voice reverberate him in his ears. And then he confronted Pharaoh chapter 8 and chapter 9 and chapter 10. It's like he was seeing the invisible. For you have the heavenly vision, the heavenly visitation. And then you hear the voice of the Lord. The things you saw. It will be as if you are beholding at that very time the invisible. That's why you hear that's how we endure. If you're going to endure your life, anything you're doing for the Lord, any challenge you're facing, you must always see the invisible one. I come to point number two. Commission from Christ through the heavenly vision. Commission from Christ through the heavenly vision. Acts of the Apostles chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. I'm reading from verse 16. But rise and stand upon thy feet. Rise and stand upon thy feet. I'm sure you know that when you get into the ministry, there are people that will challenge you. Who told you to do this? By what authority are you doing this? They even challenged Peter. After that, lame man got up. And then did many people believe as a result of the great impact of that miracle and the religious leaders of the day were not happy and so they called him after they had put them overnight in the prison and then they said tell us by what authority have you done this he always ask that question even jesus christ because he didn't go through the system that is the system of the sanhedrin and the pharisees and the sadducees he also asked him by what authority do you do this they're going to ask you and they might ask Paul the apostle and he had an authority that was going to refer to and that was the authority of the almighty God that told him rise at this time upon thy feet and then stand for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose you are this uh, Bible study today for a purpose you are this meeting today for a purpose all this week as we're going to go through the word of God it is for a purpose or well, you just say like you know those boys and girls playing on the street and the beach drum to one another and dance and it's all play no purpose no goal no desire just play just a while away time uh, I believe that your time is so precious there's no part of your time to while away am I right then if you are in a particular place you find out for what purpose am I here what's the word that God has for me or is it to just have you know we always come to Monday Bible study you are out there in your district in your local church you always come to the Bible study and today is Bible study day and we have come today as usual I never do anything as usual when I come to the Bible study I come because I know that Bible study has a purpose in my life has a purpose in the life of the congregation and you better understand this year that everywhere the Lord makes you to come to there is a purpose there's a desire there's a goal there is something that he wants to achieve and then you know the Lord is speaking to me for this purpose do you see any purpose why God has brought you here is there something ringing in your heart I am here 
for a purpose. There must be a purpose in your heart. And the Lord told Paul the Apostle, I've appeared unto you for this purpose. You know, I, you know sometimes you'll find a lot of people, uh, they have some dream, maybe a great dream. They have a revelation, a great revelation. And all they do is, you know, they stand up in church, praise the Lord, brethren, I have a dream. And I have a great revelation. What have you done about it? What's the purpose of that dream, that revelation? And then you see, they just go about giving testimony. They go to that church, give the testimony, go to that church, give the testimony. What's the purpose? I have appeared unto you for this purpose. To make thee a minister. And a witness both of the things with our sin. And of the things of those things in the which I will yet appear unto thee. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I now send thee to open their eyes. To open their eyes. Paul, we can't talk to you. You've gone already. If I were to talk to you, I'd be asking you, when you were in Thessalonica, what were you to do to open their eyes? As you we went to Iconium, whatever city, what were you to do to open their eyes? That they will see their sin. That they will see the Savior. That they will see the Lord. That they will see the great possibilities of believing before them. To open their eyes. And those of us who are leaders and workers today, I'm asking you the question. When you minister, why do you minister? When you teach such a scripture, why do you teach such a scripture? When you preach on Thursday, when you preach on Sunday, why do you preach? To open their eyes. When people listen to you, are their eyes of understanding opened? Do they see themselves as God sees them? Do they see the grace of God as God makes available? Do they see the possibilities of the power of God in them as they connect with God? Do they see? The reason why we minister any kind of ministry, if it's the church of the living God out there in the field where people are dying of perishing, is to open their eyes. Ask yourself. It's not, uh, did I preach sound doctrine? Many people here can preach sound doctrine. Did I quote many references of the Bible? Many people can quote many references of the Bible. And did I speak authoritatively? Many people can speak authoritatively. Did I open their eyes to see? But they never saw before. Revelation. Did I give them any revelation of the word of God? To open their eyes. To turn them from darkness to light. Does your ministry, does your message turn people? Physically. Domestically. And morally. Spiritually. Does your message, does it carry a turning power? That the, the message becomes a turning point in their lives. That's the purpose of ministry. That's what God called all the apostles to do. That's what he has called you to do. To open their eyes for us and then to turn them from darkness unto light. And then from the power of Satan. The, the devil holding them down in his power. The devil holding them down and wanting to destroy them. And then you come for the message of life. And you turn them away from the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that see me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. You see how Paul the Apostle singled himself out? Oh yes, Barnabas, uh, you know, he, he was to go with me. He turned away from the battlefield. He turned away from the evangelistic people. But as for me, as for me, you know, when you become part of the crowd, we're, we're doing it together. We're moving together. We're preaching together. We're, we're, we're ministering together. And we're evangelizing together. When you join the crowd, if they turn back, you turn back. When you single out yourself, and you know, the Lord has called you, whatever they do, Whatever they do not do. I, in particular, O oh King Agrippa, I can tell you about this about myself. I have not been disobedient to the heavenly vision. I pray the Lord will do the same thing in your life. Acts of the, uh, sorry, in the Galatians chapter 1, verse 13. Galatians chapter 1, I'm reading to you from verse 13. For ye have heard my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion. 
how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of the, of the fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me. This man knew the reason why he was called to reveal his son in me. To reveal his son in me. Not just that Jesus will enter into me and then nobody will see him revealed through my life. He woke up in the morning and said, Lord, thank you very much. I know why this day has come to be. I know what I'm to do this day. I'm to reveal the Son of God who lives in me, reveal him to my world. And then all through the day, he kept on remembering, I'm revealing the Lord unto the people I meet today. And then in the evening, he'll come back and then he will take inventory of what has been done during the day. Did I reveal Christ to my world today? And any day that he didn't reveal Christ, I know he revealed Christ to people every time, but if there was any day he didn't reveal Christ unto the people, today has been lost. I lost today. I miss my purpose today. I miss the place I should go today and the things I should do. I missed it today. Any day in your life that you're not revealing the grace of God, the glory of God, the salvation of the Lord, the transformation that Jesus makes in our lives. Anytime you are not revealing the Christ in you, you are not revealing Him to your world, that day is lost. How many days have been lost in our lives? That you did not reveal Christ to the people. When you had a chance to do it, when you come to preach, what a chance, what a chance, what a glorious opportunity to reveal Christ that's in you. And when you interact with people in the public, in the bus, in your community, in your office, and when you find people that do not know Christ, they do not know the light of the glorious gospel. And they do not have the salvation of the Lord. What a glorious opportunity to reveal Christ that lives in you. And when you are your family, maybe your in-laws come. And they want to make trouble. They don't know anything but trouble. Fighting. Anger. Threatening you. What a glorious chance you have. Lord, I thank you. They do not know the Prince of Peace. What a glorious privilege you have to reveal Christ, the Prince of Peace, unto them. Any day, the opportunity comes to you to reveal Christ unto people, and you miss that opportunity. It's a lost day in your life. But Paul the Apostle knew, here is the reason I was called. He said, when the Lord called me to reveal His Son in me, that I might preach Him among the heathen immediately, I conferred not for flesh and blood. And then we're told in Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 18. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not wrought by me. To make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed, through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named lest I should build upon another man's foundation. Do you understand what Paul the Apostle was saying? He, he was a man that could face challenge. He didn't want to take over another person's large congregation. You know, that's what people like to do. They cannot cultivate a virgin land. They cannot cultivate a desert land. And they cannot start from level zero, ground zero. No converts, no workers, no property, no church people. They don't have that calling. They don't have the calling. All they have is the ministry of maintenance. The congregation is there already. 
let something happen to that fellow, having the last congregation and beat him up and get him up so they can take over. And then they have that ministry of maintainers, maintaining the ministry that is there. But he said, no, I'm not going to build on other people's foundation where people never read the Bible. That's where he went. Where people were serving the unknown God, that's where he went. Where people never heard about Jesus, that's where he went. Whenever people never heard about any promise of the Lord, that's where he went. Where people have never seen, they have never seen any Christian, that's where he went. He said, so that I will not build on another person's foundation. You know, they are not people that you only go to believers so as to convince the believers to come over to their church. Even in the same denomination, they cannot go to Virgin Land and they cannot go to places where there are no converts yet and make their own converts. But he said, this is what I do so that I'm not building on another person's foundation. Verse 21. But as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see. They shall see. Why? Because I'm to open their eyes. They shall see. And they that have not heard shall understand. For which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you. In First Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 16. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me, what is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge that I abuse not my power in the gospel. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. Unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without law. Be not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made, I made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. That's the challenge that we see in the life of Paul the Apostle. But you know the subtitle there, and you see what the Lord is doing. The Lord is 